anymore, but we all caught that on camera. There it goes. Yeah, so that should not happen. So um, we got our, our contender. We ran it back from Topsail Beach. It was about 220 miles. Everything ran great, um, minus the motor not ping. I think we fixed that the other day. But motors are new to us. Uh, they have like 910 hours on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a full 200 hour service. Change the spark plugs, oil filter, engine oil. I'm gonna replace the impeller. And while we're at it, look up and make sure these motors don't have the exhaust corrosion that they're notorious for having. Uh, if our fluids look clean, then uh, we're going to go fishing on Saturday. If not, we're going to dive into it and fix everything so we can go fishing next week. Yeah, we also ran um, about 120 gallons of fuel. We don't know how old it was through the motors, and that'll foul spark plugs pretty quickly. So another reason we're going to put some fresh plugs in. Uh, they don't look too bad. Uh, just a little bit of carbon on the ends. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Put a little bit of anti-seize on the spark plugs. Uh, just helps them go in and come out a little bit easier. Kind of left over from automotive days. Definitely something you want to do by hand. You don't want to risk cross-threading a spark plug. So Leon's headed to uh, the Department of Natural Resources to try to get the paperwork updated on this. and. Keep us legal. I think we have 30 days, but um, it's better just to have a sticker on the side of the boat so you don't get stopped for a courtesy check. We have life jackets, flares, horn, all the important stuff. Still, you don't want to get stopped. I always like to put a little dab of dielectric grease. Uh, just helps the... Um, boot come off easier next time we change the plugs. So a little dab will do it. All right, we've got six spark plugs replaced. Let's move on to the oil. And there's just a little cover on top of the oil filter, uh, 10 millimeter, get that out of the way. Looks like they've um, got a nice little tray to catch any oil that drips. See if we can spin this off by hand. I might make it. Oh yeah, somebody did their job correctly. Just in case there's any oil left in there. Not a drop. Put a light coat of oil on the seal, a ring on the filter. Ended up spilling a little more on myself than I'd planned, but that'll work. Careful not to cross thread it. And really it just needs to be hand tight. That's all it takes. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, it's got a little bit of color to it, but um, again, I don't know how long it's been in here and we plan on running these motors hard. They're 225s. Everybody says, oh, a contender with 225s is underpowered. We're just gonna run them hard. So I want some fresh oil. Top speed's 47.7 uh, miles an hour. That's pretty fast. Got the oil extractor and the dipstick tube and just a couple pumps and uh, we should be good to go. Now we let gravity do the work. All right, we've got our six spark plugs in and our wires back on. So we're just gonna reinstall this cover. Again, it's a five millimeter Allen, four screws. And that's why we only put them in finger tight to start with. 
All right, so it looks like we've got um, almost six liters of oil. What is that in quarts? We're in the States. Should be about six quarts. Um, and we are full, just sucking a little bit of the last gunk up. Now it's time to refill this sucker. Just let it all drain back down and just fill her up. See if I can find a funnel. So these um, oil caps are notoriously difficult to remove. So I'm just going to put a rag and a pair of channel locks and gently try not to break it. I did the, did the trick. Clean funnel and six quarts of oil. Felt like about two quarts. Give it a minute to settle and we'll check the oil. There it is. Oil doesn't look too bad in our other motor. I was right on the high mark, so it's not burning any oil or leaking. <laughs> um, but again, we're gonna run these motors hard, so we're gonna put some fresh oil in. And go ahead and get it draining while we put the covers on the other one. Gonna drain the uh, gear case oil. If you don't have one of these impact uh, screwdrivers, I highly recommend them. Sometimes these drain plugs are stubborn. We were able to get the drain plug out and I don't like what I'm seeing. That is definitely water coming out of the gear case. So we'll see how much water is in there. It's amazing we made it this far without blowing up the lower unit. We ran 200 miles Thursday and Friday. When's the oil going to start coming out? Oh man, that is terrible. Disgusting. So we're going to, um, I guess have to pull the lower unit off, pressure test it and figure out which seals we need to replace. That is really bad. And that's why we're servicing the boat before we run 75 miles offshore. All right, to drop the lower unit, we've got uh, seven 14 millimeter bolts we need to remove. Three on this side, three on this side, and then you can't forget about this one right here holding on your anode. I believe that's also a 14 millimeter. We'll break them loose with a wrench. And if you're using a power ratchet or anything on this bolt, be very careful. You'll start pulling it out and then your ratchet will get stuck on this fin and you can't reverse direction. And it takes a big hammer uh, and a little bit of luck to get your ratchet out. If you do start banging on your gear case, always use a rubber mallet. Doesn't take much to break these fins off. All right, this is the moment of truth. These Yamaha 225s are notorious for exhaust corrosion. We just saw a pile of metal on top of uh, our shift linkage housing. And let's get a look up here and see what we can see. Oh, there's uh, up here, you can see all that white pitting. That's a telltale sign that we need to replace the exhaust. Uh, and all that corrosion was up front, really, 
uh, that's um, up in the exhaust housing. So unfortunately the kits are back ordered. The dealer said it could be three weeks. I hear some people have been waiting for months and we'll just have to uh, put her back together and see how long we can run her. And we just dropped the gear case and it is piles of rust on the shift cover. Uh, we vacuum that up. No idea where it all came from, but again, we've got to find the, the leaky uh, seal. It could be the shift shaft, it could be the drive shaft, or it could be the prop shaft seals. Uh, we'll pull the hub off, pull the pump cover off, and then we'll use our vacuum pressure tester and pressure test the gear case. All right, we are the OEM. We make the prop puller. We are out of stock, so we're gonna use a rubber mallet, see if we can make any progress. All right, I don't see any fishing line wrapped around, but the amount of grease it looks like I see in here, um, I'm gonna say that's our culprit. Just uh, four 10 millimeter screws out, just pops up. I don't see a bunch of um, pitting or scratches in here. If you can, um, first I thought this was just grease, but that is actually melted plastic. Partially obstructing water flow to the engine. It's a miracle that this thing didn't overheat on us. And all of these O-rings got so hot that they melted also. So um, maybe this was a problem. It's un unbelievable we didn't get an overheat alarm. I don't know what this is, but it shouldn't be on the impeller. So glad we're glad we're replacing it. All right, this collar is a real pain. Uh, that's why we have this MC 13 Slide it over, hang on tight, and boom. With a couple screwdrivers or uh, diagonal cutters, that'll still take you 15 minutes. A couple spring washers. Never seen a water pump that looks like this, actually. I don't know if it was run dry or what, but looks like it got hot and started to melt. Now we've got to get this key out. Hey, hey! Should be a lot easier. Make sure you cover your Woodruff key with lots and lots of grease. Well, you can see bits and pieces of the spring. That means this seal is definitely bad and we need to be, needs to be replaced. So we've got, we'll pull this cover off and we'll be able to see the shift seals but uh, definitely need to replace that one. Yamaha adapter, I believe is a smaller one. And now we just pump it up. I believe the spec is about 12 PS. We don't even need soapy water. You can see the bubbles coming up right there. So before we can move any further down in this troubleshooting process, because that leak is so bad, we're gonna have to replace those seals. As warm as it is, I'm so glad we're doing this in the shop instead of in my backyard. It's nice to have a concrete floor, shade, um, toolbox loaded with tools instead of having to walk into my shed. Uh, these are just four uh, 12 millimeter head bolts. Now I'm gonna get to use the 16. Uh, sometimes these pop off in one whack and sometimes it's a uh, 15 minute aerobic exercise. We'll see how it goes today. After a couple wax, if it doesn't budge, a um, good thing to do is to just hit the corner with the hammer, try to spin it around, break the seal. Again, it doesn't take much. All right. Victory, finally. And that doesn't even look that bad. I've got some shims. We need to make sure we don't don't lose. I guess it is kind of bad. 
but we got it out. Um, now we need a new bearing, new housing, new seals. So go look at the uh, parts manual and get them on order. We've got our new bearing carrier since I destroyed this one, uh, removing it yesterday. So a new bearing carrier, new bearing, uh, two new seals. We've got a new drain plug since we had to whale on the other one to get it out. New drain plug seals. Let's see if I can find a socket to install this. All right, I'm just gonna coat the outer bearing assembly grease. Hopefully keep it from corroding in place like it was when we removed it. We've got some oil on the bearing and our seals. I have some grease on those lips. There's a little notch. We're gonna put that notch towards the forward. It's hard to believe it slid in that easily after all the banging it took to get it out. Four screws, put a dab of grease on those. Fortunate that they came out like they did. All right, so we've got our new seals in. Let's try pressure testing this again and see if it leaks. See if it'll hold pressure this time. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, so that should not happen. Back to the parts store. All right, uh, we're going to be removing our bearing carrier on the standard rotating lower unit, and we may have to replace a bearing while we're in here. We've got two on this lower unit. There's not a retaining ring uh, that you need a special wrench for. It's just two uh, 12 millimeter uh, bolts. You want to make sure you have a little bit of grease on these threads, keep them from seizing up and working. You want them to spin freely. This tool has strong acne threads, so it won't strip out. All right. Arms are in, hooked on. Just notice there's two uh, 10 millimeter screws under here. We're going to go ahead and yank those out. But now we've got a seven eighths inch socket, three quarter inch ratchet, and we'll see. I have seen these things break. Oh yeah. And we're not breaking it today. All right. That's how easy the 17 is. Really, no chunks are missing. Uh, we'll need two new O-rings. I don't know if we're gonna be able to replace this bearing or not, but uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with how things look, considering we ran it about 100, and, a minimum of 100 miles with no, the half water oil mix. And we've gotta pull these seals out or drive them out and uh, go to the parts store and get some new ones. Is that one or two? One seal down, bearing out, and the other seal's out. Wonderful. I don't think we broke anything. Let's see how this surface feels in here. Other than some corrosion, should be able to reuse it. Just gonna put some oil on the outside of this bearing. Service manual says to put it in with the numbers facing out. I don't know why, but do that. Got a one inch socket we used to drive it in. All right, right in spec, 25 and a quarter. Now we're two oil seals. Let's go this one almost all the way down and then the next um, to depth of 4.75. Looks like we'll be using a 32 millimeter socket and put our other seal in. Again, the, they go in with the uh, opening facing up, both of them. We're going to a depth of 4.75. We're there. And some. Close enough for me. Now we've got to get these old O-rings off and get the new ones on. Go ahead and pack 
these grooves with uh, grease. Hopefully, help prevent corrosion. All right, we've got both our rings on. I'm smear this grease around, help lubricate it. And it's time to try to get this back installed. pressure test it. All right, so it's holding steady so far. Uh, spinning the shafts really is important to make sure there's no nicks you didn't see or burrs causing uh, it to leak. Since we have the tool, I'm just going to shift this back and forth a couple times. Make sure our pressure doesn't drop forward, neutral, and reverse. Everything's shifting smoothly. Leave it in neutral. That's how it was when we took it off the boat. And uh, see if our pressure changed. Still at 12 psi, so I'm happy. We're just gonna put it back together. And I really uh, don't want to break this shift housing seal, so I'm gonna give it one more stab. And if that doesn't work, then uh, we're just gonna move on. It does not want to budge. I think we are going to have a nice catastrophic failure. Yeah, that's nasty. Very nasty indeed. Probably drain and refill this gear case after about 20, maybe 50 hours. You get all this salt, calcium built up. Some extra grease on here. This is our third and final pressure test. Uh, take it up to 12 pounds and we'll leave it. All right, it, it's been about five minutes and we're still holding at 12. All right, so after looking at this a little more, uh, you know, we saw on the impeller we had all these bubbles, uh, boils, didn't really know where they came from. Um, at first I thought this was maybe some gasket maker somebody put on there. This is actually melted O-rings. Uh, both the, both of the O-rings are melted. Uh, the housing has melted so much that it's mostly covered the outlet where your cooling water goes into your motor. I was thinking just trimming that off, but even with these O-rings in here like that, we need to replace this cover. And while I'm at it, I'll get another cover for the, uh, the shift shaft seal. And then we'll just have a brand new gear case, essentially. Well, seals on the gear case. Right, so today we're going to use put our new water pump housing on, um, our impeller kit and all the, the seals and O-rings and gaskets and base plates. And there's already a good amount of grease down there, but I really want to pack it full. And it goes flat side down. Boom. Our seals are now protected. Wear plate back on. Wear plate and gasket back on. It's got some dowels to line up. Uh, I'll go ahead and put a dab of grease on those. Grease is your friend on this stuff. This is a little uh, light film of grease on our wear plate. All right. So we've got a O-ring goes in the bottom of this, and then a bigger O-ring goes on the outside, and our new cup. So I'll put some grease in the bottom of this to hold everything together, especially in that O-ring groove. Don't want that falling apart. It came with two O-rings. This is going to be the smaller one. Just Pushes right in, and we already have replaced with, um, the bushing for the pickup tube or the seal, and then we can reuse the plastic retainer. Just pops in. We'll put a light coat of grease on that as well. Should have put the O-ring in first. So our O-ring didn't fall out because the grease was in there. We got our new cup. Um, has two locating tabs. Again, our tabs are. Locate, um, have it located correctly and it's all the way seated. I'm just going to put a light coat of grease all around in here. Help keep that water pump uh, 
lubricated if somebody's running it dry, which apparently has already happened to this motor. Onto our Woodruff key, these things can be a challenge to install. Make sure you cover them with grease. And we're gonna try just to tap this one in. I had better luck using a hammer than um, trying to force them in with a pair of channel locks. Got our impeller, keyway, that's what we slide down. We'll put some grease on the inside and the uh, keyway doesn't go all the way through. So make sure you have the opening down. There's an opening on that fin. Just line it up, push it all the way down. Next comes the spring washer. That's three. Um, flat washer, wave washer, flat washer. And they go together like that. I mean, going to be able to reuse this collar that we removed with our 13. Again, put some grease on this, slide it on down. And as we're pulling up on the drive shaft, I'm going to use the 13 to tap down our collar. And as we put our housing on, we're going to rotate the drive shaft clockwise. Pickup tube goes towards the back. As I push down, I'm turning clockwise. Still have a nice amount of grease on those dowels. All right, it's all the way down. And we're close to uh, being able to put some gear or oil in the lower unit, reinstalling it and dropping the port motor and see what it looks like. I suspect whoever ran these dry ran both motors dry at the same time boat you know it's new to us that had been on the market for about a year before we bought it i suspect somebody came and looked at it it was kept on a lift and they didn't drop it in the water they just fired up the motors and grease up our shift shaft splines because you want all this stuff to come back come apart next time you have to drop the lower unit I'm going to grease our drive shaft splines and gobs of this. It's not going to hurt anything. A little bit on our, put a little extra dab on our pickup tube, a little extra dab on our speedometer tube, and um, put some fresh grease on our bolts, and then we'll be ready to install this back on the boat. Um, then we'll do the prop. Once it's on the uh, motor, uh, it is still in neutral. I've messed around with it quite a bit. Controls are still in neutral, so everything will go up together. All right, I'm just gonna try to get this installed single-handedly and not drop it on my toes. We'll see how that goes. All right, you got fresh anodes on it, onto our propeller. Now we're ready to put our propeller back on. Um, before we do, there's a grease cert here. Pump that full of grease. It slides right on. If you haven't noticed, I put grease on just about every piece of hardware I take off on a boat. My experience has been Better to have grease than not. So we'll get it all greased up into our wash. All right, this doesn't need to be super tight, but um, block of wood, it's one and eight, one and an eighth inch. And we'll just get it snug and go to the next hole. And a cut of keys in. We don't want our propeller falling off. I hear that happens more than you'd believe. All right, so we're gonna trim it down, fill it up with gear oil. All right, so yesterday uh, for the other lower unit, we just used the standard fittings that come with it and it was a huge pain, I don't know, twisting up, the, kinking the hose. We already have our plug in here from the um, pressure tester. So I'm just gonna 
go ahead and upgrade our kit. Cut off the old hose, QKD-F. Slide that right on and clip her in. And remove our vent. Should have only been hand tight. Put a new washer on that. Gasket, whatever you want to call it. Got a new drain plug since the old one was a royal pain. This is something I never used to replace on my boat, but um, looks like they had never been replaced. So after 20, 20 years, definitely want to replace them. You're supposed to do it every gear oil change. Sounds close. There it is. Give it one more pump for good measure. All right, so that was probably about one and a quarter. It was not full when we started. Now to disconnect. All right, get both drain screws in. Gear case full of oil. Just give it a quick wipe down. And this motor is ready to at least be fired up in the parking lot, if not splashed in the river. Spark plugs, oil filter, engine oil, upper bearing seals, upper bearing, lower bearings or lower seals, and the bear, one of the bearings in the bearing carrier, new gear oil, new water pump housing. Um, have not pulled the thermostat. That's probably the next thing I would look at if I wasn't sick and tired of working on this motor. We'll tackle that another day.